So uh, first of all, bias is human. Um, the machines are machines. You know, my favorite quote uh, for today is, submarines cannot swim. Thinking that machines can think is like thinking submarines can swim. So if you think like that, then of course you will be very concerned about bias. And there is a concern in terms of bias. Everything that humans do, and humans are biased, you'll be subconsciously or consciously, will be translated into the machine work. And that's why, how to solve it, to your point about that, is we need very diverse people working together, making sure that we have not just gender diversity, but most importantly, cultural diversity, uh, educational diversity, language diversity, point of view, all of that, and putting these people together Together to create uh, you know products that are relevant for the entire society because we know today today we only have 17% of women working in the high-tech in the ICT sector and out of those less than 5% work in AI so if someone is telling us hey we are using AI we are asking okay from where are the training data how can you get that or from where are they do you have to pay for them is it already there or what is it we are here at the omnius event um, they have tons and millions of data sets so we are invested in them because we think they can really do ai because they have a huge data set where they can train the algorithms with um, so um, yeah you have to show us why are you able to build something and if you say we're using ai we are asking okay why can you do that where are the data sets the training sets um, yeah, and so on. If there's nothing, we are not investing in the company. To retrain a biased algorithm is faster, that's easier to fix, than a biased human being. Just as a general statement, the brain of the human being is it's super complex and super difficult to get bias out, as we all know. But our, our product is not um, taking over the decision until the end. We are a decision-making support tool. So this decision is done by the claim adjuster. So what we do is, because we have access to data and we can offer wonderful visualizations and infographics, we enable the claim adjuster to do a good decision. And sometimes it's necessary to make an exception. Sometimes it's, so it's kind of a hybrid approach. And that's also how we think that, that this industry can, can get more and more empathetic because machine and humans can learn from each other. That's super important for us. So when, when I ask you, would you prefer that your claim, um, that your claim advisor is only a human? Option one. Or it's only artificial intelligence? Option two. Or it's a hybrid approach and the strengths of both are collaborating. What would you say? I would choose option three. <laughs> See? And that's the same on, for a lot of people, yes. We want to have as many data as possible in a very objective way offered, but we want people to make the final decision. So RPA usually just mimics, mimics human behavior, right? So everything that I do, a process in a series of steps, I can teach the robot to do that the same way. So of course, uh, a, a model is biased as long as the human that teaches the robot is biased. So as long as I teach the robot to mimic exactly my behavior, then I don't have to, to worry about these kind of things. So I think the, the most important is two things. One is obviously the, the technology. So you need like researchers to build like these algorithms. But secondly, as you said, it's the, the data quantity and quality. So you need a lot of data. So as I said, like we are trained on hundreds of millions of examples. Um, the more data you have, um, the better the, the, the output. So oh, what we do now to date, we work with 10 of the top 40 insurance companies globally and process up to 100% of their claims. So we get like a lot of claims on a daily basis that we can then feed back to the system and make the system even better.